understanding the causes and mechanisms behind these failures is crucial for any engineer, except software engineers, but they are not real engineers anyway. Tension. Tension stress occurs when forces pull an object apart along the same axis, stretching the material and potentially leading to deformation or fracture. This stress acts perpendicularly to the cross-sectional area it affects. Tension elongates the object in the direction of the applied force. A common example is a rope under load, where excessive force causes the fibers to separate and the rope to snap. In engineering, tension failure happens when the applied stress exceeds the material's tensile strength, the maximum stress a material can withstand while being stretched. Ductile materials like metals may show significant elongation or necking before fracturing, providing warning signs of failure. Brittle materials such as ceramics tend to break suddenly without prior deformation. Shear. Shear arises when two opposing forces act on different parts of an object along parallel but slightly offset lines, causing deformation or fracture through a diagonal motion. Unlike tension, which pulls an object apart along the same axis, shear stress acts tangentially. A common example is cutting paper with scissors, where the blades exert opposite forces slightly apart leading to the paper fracturing. Shear also prevails in torsion failures, as the material breaks along planes where shear stress is maximum. Ductile materials may exhibit twisting deformation before failure, while brittle materials can fracture suddenly, often at a 45 degree angle. Compression. Compression stress arises when forces push an object together along the same axis, reducing its length and increasing its density. This stress acts perpendicularly to the surface it compresses. Opposing tension stress, which pulls an object apart. Compression typically shortens and bulges the material, depending on its shape and material properties. In engineering, compression failure occurs when the applied stress exceeds the material's compressive strength, the maximum stress it can withstand before deforming or fracturing. Ductile materials under compression tend to deform plastically, often bulging or spreading without immediate failure, while brittle materials may crack or shatter abruptly. Buckling can also occur during compression. It primarily affects long, slender structures, such as columns, beams, or thin-walled tubes. Instead of uniformly compressing, these structures exhibit instability, bending or curving sideways under load. The critical load at which buckling occurs depends on several factors, including the material's modulus of elasticity, the column's length, cross-sectional area, and the manner in which its ends are supported, e.g., fixed, pinned, or free. Buckling can lead to catastrophic failure, as the sudden deformation may cause the structure to collapse completely. Engineers use theories such as Euler's buckling formula to predict and mitigate buckling risks. Where? Where failure in physics and engineering refers to the gradual degradation of material surfaces due to mechanical interaction with another surface, often through repeated contact, friction, or abrasion. Unlike stress failures such as tension or compression, wear does not result from a single catastrophic event, but accumulates over time, leading to the loss of material and eventual malfunction. A simple example is the erosion of a car tire's tread as it continually rubs against the road surface. Wear failure is categorized into two types, abrasive wear and adhesive wear. Abrasive wear occurs when harder particles or rough surfaces scrape against a softer material, cutting or plowing away microscopic layers. Adhesive wear happens when two surfaces in close contact bond temporarily, and material from one surface transfers to the other due to friction. The progression of wear failure depends on factors such as material properties, surface finish, load, speed, lubrication, and environmental conditions. Effective mitigation strategies include using wear-resistant materials, applying surface coatings, and ensuring proper lubrication to reduce friction. Fracture. Fracture due to stress concentration occurs when a material fails under stress that exceeds its local strength, typically initiated at a flaw or sharp feature in the material. Unlike uniform stress distribution, which assumes that forces are evenly spread across the material, Stress concentration refers to the amplification of stress at points of irregularity, such as cracks, sharp corners, notches, or holes. 
These points act as stress risers, significantly increasing the likelihood of failure. A simple example of stress concentration can be seen in a sheet of metal with a drilled hole. When the sheet is subjected to tension, the area around the hole experiences a much higher localized stress compared to the rest of the sheet, making it the most likely point of fracture. Corrosion. Corrosion failure in physics and engineering refers to the gradual deterioration of materials, typically metals, due to chemical reactions with their environment, leading to the formation of unwanted compounds, such as rust or oxides. Unlike other types of failure that occur from mechanical stresses, corrosion is primarily a result of environmental factors, such as exposure to moisture, air, or chemicals. Corrosion failure can occur through several mechanisms, such as uniform corrosion, pitting corrosion, crevice corrosion, and galvanic corrosion. Fatigue. Fatigue failure in physics and engineering refers to the progressive and localized structural damage that occurs when a material is subjected to repeated or fluctuating stresses over time, often below the material's ultimate tensile strength. Unlike a single catastrophic failure, fatigue occurs gradually as tiny cracks form and propagate within the material with each load cycle, eventually leading to complete fracture. A simple example of fatigue failure is the breaking of a metal paper clip that is bent back and forth repeatedly. Even though the force applied is well below the metal's breaking point, the repeated stress causes it to snap after a certain number of cycles. The number of loading cycles before failure is known as the material's fatigue life and it can be represented on the Wohler curve, or SN curve, which plots the relationship between the applied stress amplitude, S, and the number of cycles to failure, N. The Wohler curve illustrates how materials can endure high stresses for a low number of cycles, but require much lower stresses to last for millions of cycles, indicating the material's fatigue limit. Resonance. Resonance failure in physics and engineering occurs when an object is subjected to periodic forces that match its natural frequency, causing it to oscillate with increasing amplitude until it fails. This phenomenon happens because the external force continuously adds energy to the system at a frequency that aligns with the object's inherent vibrational frequency, causing it to resonate. As the oscillations amplify, they can exceed the material's strength or the structure's ability to absorb the energy, leading to catastrophic failure. A simple example of resonance failure is the collapse of a bridge or a building when wind or other forces cause it to vibrate at its natural frequency, ultimately resulting in structural damage. Thermal expansion. Thermal expansion failure in physics and engineering occurs when a material undergoes stress or deformation due to changes in temperature causing it to expand or contract. Materials typically expand when heated and contract when cooled. But if these changes are restricted or occur unevenly, internal stresses can develop, potentially leading to failure.